The Scientific Method by Katrina Sherbin. In this video, we'll discuss specifically how to create a controlled experiment. So, so far, you should have already asked a question. Research that question, formed a hypothesis, and now you're ready to test your hypothesis. Afterwards, you would then click and analyze your data, and you would draw and share conclusions and findings. So, what is a controlled experiment, you might ask? Well, a controlled experiment is an experiment in which everything is held constant except for one variable also known as a fair test and we will discuss what a fair test variable and constant means in respect to a controlled experiment so to start this discussion let's think about a race races are usually especially in olympics very fair everybody starts at the same point they have been given the same um, conditions to run in they are all running on the same day and in order to figure out who is the What's fastest the in the world it needs to be extremely fair this is why they all wear running shoes instead of high heels or shoes with springs or they don't wear bags over their heads if Usain Bolt had high heels and a bag he would not be winning and maybe this guy would then how could we say that he is or isn't the fastest person in the world in this example, the runner is the variable and all other conditions are constants, meaning they're held the same. There is a cause and effect relationship in a fair race. The cause would be the runner's ability and it would affect the runner's time. In a fair race, all other conditions are held constant or the same. This way, it is clear it was the runner's ability that caused him to win and not something else. Here we have the cause and effect relationship. The cause is the runner's ability and the effect is the runner's time. The runner's ability affected the runner's time. So what does a fair race have to do with variables? Well, variables has the prefix very and the suffix able. Very means to change and able means the ability to. So a variable is able to change. And there are three types. We have the independent variable, which is abbreviated as IV. We have the dependent or responding variable, which has the abbreviation of DV. And then we have the control variables, which are abbreviated as CV. Now, if you want to know what the independent variable is, you might ask yourself, what am I purposefully changing in my experiment? What is the cause going to be? In our runner example, the cause was the runner. Now, there has to be an effect. So when you want to figure out the dependent variable, ask yourself what's going to respond to that change. What is the effect? And the effect is different runners will cause different times. The now, the control variable is something that is not the independent or dependent variable. It's something that could interfere with the experiment. So it needs to be held constant. It needs to be the same. Now, to review, let's ask ourselves these questions. What does variable mean? What are the three types of variables in a controlled experiment? What questions should I ask when determining each type of variable? In the fair race example, what was the independent, dependent, and control variable? Pause to answer these questions and play when ready. So variable means able to change. Check. The three types of variables are independent or manipulated, otherwise known, otherwise known as the cause, dependent responding variable, also known as the effect and control variables or constants. Check. And then what question should you ask when determining variable? For the independent what variable, you should ask what are you purposely changing? What is the cause in the cause and effect relationship of testing? 
dependent variable, what's going to respond to that change that I'm making? And that is the dependent variable. Constant, what's not the independent or dependent variable? And that will be your um, control variable. Now, in the race, the cause was the runner, the effect was the time, and the constants were everything but the runner in the time. For like, example, the weather, the time they started, and many more. So how to design a controlled experiment? So let's start with our experimental question. Does the amount of water affect the height of a bean plant? And our hypothesis was, if there is an increase in the amount of water, then there will be an increase in the height of a bean plant. Now, we need to design a controlled experiment. So the first thing we need to do is identify the independent manipulated variable. Then we need to identify the dependent respondent variable. And then we need to determine the control variables. Now, if we wrote our experimental question in this format in our hypothesis in the if-then format, we can clearly easily find the cause and effect relationship. The, here you can see the effect um, or effect, depending on what your relationship is. And the cause was the amount of water, and the effect was the height of a bean plant. Now, we have in our hypothesis an if-then statement. If this happens, then this will result. If this is the cause, then this will be the Let effect. The, dancing begin. the amount of water, if there is a change in the amount of water, then there will be a change in the height of a bean plant. So the independent variable is nicknamed the cause. And the dependent variable nicknames the effect. That means that the independent variable is not water, and the dependent variable is the height of a bean plant. Now we need to determine those control variables. So when I determine my control variables, I think about what my experiment might look like, how I might go about it, and I think about the things I would have to do. So I know that I would have to get four seeds, figure out a place to plant them, um, I'd probably randomly choose four random seeds and uh, just go about my day. And I'm going to plant them outside, maybe by a window, and I'm going to determine how much water I want to give each. So since I know this is my cause, I'm going to measure it out incrementally into 150 let the dancing begin. 25 and 0 milliliters of water. Now, as we can see, I carefully measure each one of these, but um, I'm just going to water them when I can. Who knows? Some days I might get to do all four at the same time. One couple days I might split them up. But let's notice, the place where I plant the seeds are in the same place. Therefore, the seeds get the same amount of sunlight, soil, and exposed to the same temperature and weather. This is good. Now, the size of the seeds and the condition of them and the depth at which I planted them have varied. You look at one has even sprouted and one is really far down. Um, and the water or the amount of water that I gave each varied as well. Never mind the time of day and where, what, how I watered them. And here's my results. As we can see, um, it, plant ain't grew a lot, but Plant C also did. It made me even be taller. And then Plant D grew too. Without water? How did that happen? Um, and so when I look at my results, begin. I um, again have my cause and effect in the graph. The amount of water is my independent variable, and my dependent variable was the plant um, height. And I'm graphing it out, and uh, this doesn't support my hypothesis, and it's actually kind of confusing. I don't understand why my plants got this way. Um, I can't make a clear determination of what caused my plants to grow this way, and why? Is this a controlled experiment? Explain. Take a second and pause, and play when you're ready to discuss. So. The amount of water was our independent variable and it varied. That's good. We want that to vary. But so did the size and depth of which I planned the seed. 
and one was even sprouted, so who knows how that affects the experiment. And then the conditions at which they were um, outside with the weather were the same, so I know that really probably didn't have an effect. So Let's now I really need to figure out how to do a con good controlled experiment, because that one wasn't controlled. There was more than one thing that was changed. So here I'm going to keep, again, the conditions um, outside by the window the same. Um, I'm also going now to make sure that all four C's are as exact as they can be. They're going to have the same volume, the same mass, and none of them are going to already be sprouting. And then I'm going to measure my water again incrementally. And, but this time I'm going to make sure I water them at the same time every day and in the same way. So then I know that it's not the type of day that has effect either. And look at my results. Again, A grows pretty well. B grows a little less. It has a little less height. C, oh, it's even smaller. And then D didn't grow at all. Um, it shouldn't. It didn't have any water. So now my graph, I have my cause, the amount of water, and it plant height. My dependent variable show a clear relationship, um, and I can clearly say it's because of the water. Everything else was held the same, so now I'm can ready to um, turn my control variables. And let me just say, I haven't actually done my my experiment yet. I'm just imagining it. So so far, my control variables are the amount of sunlight, the carbon dioxide, the temperature in the air, the size of the seed, the type of seed, the depth of which the seed was planted, the type of soil time of day that the plant was watered. All of these are my control variables. And again, let me specify, you don't figure out control variables after experiment, you figure it out before. But it's helpful to imagine it so you can figure out everything that might interfere with your independent variable, which is the amount of water. Now, one more point. Your control variables cannot be your independent or dependent variable. There's only one independent variable. There's only one thing that's changed in a controlled experiment. Then you can measure your dependent variables. And your control variables are everything else. So let's review. How many independent variables should there be in a controlled experiment? Number two. Explain why it is helpful to find the cause and effect relationship before starting your experiment. Number three. Explain to a fourth grader why control variables are important in a controlled experiment. Number four, explain why the amount of water given to the plants could not be a controlled variable. Number four, argue why the experiment two is a controlled experiment and experiment one was not. Use details and evidence to, from this video to support your answer. Oops, oops.